Now a Target 12 investigators exclusive, the forgotten. Target 12 has discovered that nearly a thousand people may be buried under a local highway, the remnants of one of several state institution cemeteries where the poor or mentally ill were laid to rest. This is an abomination. I, I, this is really a bad mock on the state of Rhode Island. We should honor the dead, not dump them like they're trash or landfill. When a Rhode Island woman came to Target 12 with questions about where her relative was buried, it led to the discovery of a highway graveyard and a mass burial site. Target 12 investigator Tolly Taylor joins us now with the exclusive details. Here in these rows of graves, there are no names, only numbers. But the people buried here may be the lucky ones. We've discovered documents showing an unmarked mass grave with nearly 600 people located in this overgrown section of the cemetery. I consider him my family hero. Maria de Grassa says the search for her great-great-grandfather Antonio Coelho's final resting place started more than a decade ago. It's about him. It's about all the good things he did for people, mostly in honor of my grandmother. Who loved him very much. DeGrasse says she was told at one point that Coelho was buried here in Cranston, in the State Farm Cemetery. In the 1960s, the state built Route 37 over part of the cemetery. And DeGrasse was worried her relative was buried beneath the state highway. They did not move everybody, and there are still people that are under Route 37. Peggy Malcolm is an expert in Rhode Island's historical cemeteries. In 2006, human remains were found by the side of Route 37, resulting in 71 people being reburied here. Also died in 1918. In State Institution Cemetery Number Two. But as Malcolm explains, there were many more than 71 people originally buried under Route 37. Target 12 walked with Malcolm to the site to see what it looks like today. I mean, how many people are we talking about possibly buried under Route 37? 800 to 1,000. According to the Rhode Island Department of Transportation, tens of thousands of people drive on Route 37 every day. When asked if RIDOT was aware that there may be nearly 1,000 people buried under Route 37, a spokesperson responded, quote, yes, RIDOT is aware. But Target 12 has learned Quello was never buried at State Farm Cemetery. His death certificate provides a clue, listing his grave number as 1773. Malcolm says that means Quello was buried just two miles away, here in State Institution Number 3 in 1941. But documents show Quello was one of 577 people buried in the cemetery that were dug up and reburied in a mass grave at State Cemetery Number 2 in 1975 to make way for an industrial complex. The mass grave is in here. The mass grave is in here? Mm -hmm. Is there, is there a plaque or, or something that I could find if I went in there? No, I don't. It was stolen. These people were in their final eternal resting places and they were dug up and dumped. I'm not looking for acknowledgement. I want a respectable place where I can bring my children to come and say thank you. Maria de Grasse tells me when her great great grandfather's grave was dug up and moved here in 1975, no one in the family was contacted. Target 12 met with DeGrasse at State Cemetery Number 2 to show her where experts believe her relative is buried. He died basically penniless, and this is why, why he ended up here. He didn't get his respect in life nor in death, so it's really, really sad. DeGrasse says she's not convinced Coelho is in fact buried at the cemetery. She vows to keep searching and says her search won't be limited to State Cemetery Number 2. The man said to be buried in a mass grave behind me, Antonio Coelho, is featured in a local museum exhibit. Coming up at 6, much more about his contributions to Rhode Island history and how he ended up here. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Tolly Taylor, 12 News. Now a Target 12 investigators exclusive, The Forgotten. As we told you at 5, Target 12 has discovered that nearly a thousand people may be buried under a local highway. Remnants of one of several state institution cemeteries where the poor or mentally ill were laid to rest. This is an abomination. I, this is really a bad mock on the state of Rhode Island. Everybody passed, well, it's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's my, but it's somebody's quote unquote fault. 
For one Rhode Islander's relatives, significant contributions to Rhode Island history weren't enough to keep him from dying at one of these state institutions. Target 12 investigator Tolly Taylor joins us now with the exclusive details. The search for Maria de Grasse's great great grandfather, Antonio Coelho, led here to State Institution Cemetery Number 2 in an unmarked, overgrown section of the cemetery with a mass grave. I consider him my family hero. Maria de Grasse says she's been searching for her great great grandfather, Antonio Coelho's final resting place, for more than a decade. She was told at one point that Coelho was buried in State Farm Cemetery, which now has Route 37 running through it. And de Grasse was worried her relative was buried beneath the state highway. They did not move everybody, and there are still people that are under 37. Peggy Malcolm is an expert in Rhode Island's historical cemeteries. I mean, how many people are we talking about possibly buried under Route 37? 800 to 1,000. But Target 12 discovered Coelho was not one of the 3,000 buried at State Farm Cemetery. Malcolm says Coelho was buried just two miles away, here in State Institution Number 3 in 1941. But documents show Coelho was one of 577 people buried in the cemetery that were dug up and reburied in a mass grave at State Cemetery Number 2 in 1975 to make way for an industrial complex. The mass grave is in here. The mass grave is in here. Mm -hmm. Is there is there a plaque or, or something that I could find if I went in there? No, I don't. It Just was stolen. These people were in their final eternal resting places, and they were dug up and dumped. You know, he wouldn't have been in this situation if he didn't try to help people. Antonio Coelho was the first person from Cape Verde to buy a packet ship in 1981. At the time, packet ships helped immigrants come to Providence for work and transport mail, money, and clothes to their families back home. The Providence Children's Museum has featured Coelho in his own exhibit ever since it first opened in 1997. All of our research indicated he was a really important voice in the community, but was very supportive of the immigrants who came over um, and I think helped build that community. But Caroline Payson of the Children's Museum acknowledges that Coelho's story has a sadder ending than the museum lets on. Because Coelho was from Cape Verde, the law forbid him from owning a ship in his name. The ship's captain took advantage and intentionally sank Coelho's ship the Nellie May. I mean, once that happened, the ship had to then go up for auction. So it went up for auction. The captain bought it at a reduced price, and Antonio lost it. Quello, who had once lived on Wickenden Street in Providence with his wife and kids, was forced to live at the state institution in Cranston. That sort of set a spiral of his life into poverty and until he died. Why is it important to specifically feature him and his ship? For older kids, it gives them that connection to someone who lived an extraordinary life, and they're able to see it. De Grasse tells Target 12 her goal is to have a grave site for Coelho that she can bring her kids to. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Tolly Taylor, 12 News.